In our politics lead, the FBI is investigating campaign contributions made by the employees of Postmaster General Louis DeJoy to Republican candidates. Now, DeJoy has been embroiled in controversy ever since he took office in May 2020. He gave $1.1 million to joint fundraising efforts for Trump's re-election campaign and the Republican Party. And once he was in office, reduced overtime and put limits on mail trips for mail carriers, which led to massive mail delays in the lead-up to the 2020 election, when, of course, a record-breaking number of Americans were voting by mail because of the pandemic, disproportionately Democrats voting by mail. DeJoy was thus accused by some Democrats of trying to secretly sabotage the election. CNN's Kristen Holmes joins us now. Kristen, what do we know about these campaign contributions by his staffers, and, and how unusual is that? Well, Jake, if proven to be true, it will be highly unusual and, frankly, inappropriate. I mean, here's what we know so far. Uh, this appears to be following reports last fall that cited former employees of DeJoy's, most of them anonymously speaking, who said that while working for DeJoy, they felt urged to and at times pressured donate to Republican candidates. And those who did actually received money back in the form of bonuses. Now, this is something that De 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 excuse me, DeJoy uh, vehemently denied. But here's what a statement uh, from his spokesperson said. It says, Mr. DeJoy has learned that the Department of Justice is investigating campaign contributions made by employees who worked for him when he was in the private sector. He has always been scrupulous in his, in his adherence to the campaign contribution laws and has never knowingly violated them. But of course, one thing to note here is, of course, we know DeJoy is a big time Republican donor. He was a Trump mega donor. He is a bundler. Uh, so all of this is highly suspect. And something that we've been hearing about for a long time, but now, of course, we know is under a formal investigation. Is there any chance here that DeJoy would lose his position as Postmaster General, which would be very difficult for him to be forced out? Yeah, that's always the big question, Jake. Of course, we know people have been calling for his ouster now for roughly a year. Uh, the thing that's impo important to note is that the only people who can remove DeJoy from office are the Board of Governors, that Postal Service Board of Governors. And for all of the allegations through the election, we have heard from the Board of Governors saying that they have full confidence in DeJoy. And right now, there's no indication that that has shifted. Now, President Biden has added more people to the Board of Governors. However, in order to actually oust DeJoy, they'd have to get some of those Trump-appointed, Trump-nominated members to sign up for that. And again, there's no indication of that. Now, the press secretary was asked whether or not Biden believed that DeJoy should be removed or replaced. And unsurprisingly, she dodged the question, saying that he would like the investigation to just play out. Uh, but again, it is ultimately going to be up to that Board of Governors. We'll have to see where this investigation goes. All right, Kristen Holmes, thanks so much. CNN's Abby Phillip joins me now here in studio. And as uh, as uh, Kristen just noted, um, Biden can't remove DeJoy. It has to, it's up to the Board of Governors. Now, Congressman Bill Pascrell, a Democrat of New Jersey, he wrote a letter to the three Biden appointees that he added to the Board of Governors, urging them to vote DeJoy out. He said he's corrupt to the core, DeJoy, and that, quote, Mr. DeJoy's continued gross mismanagement, self-inflicted nationwide delays in mail delivery, and rampant financial conflicts of interest justly warrant his ex expeditious removal so that the board may appoint in his place a qualified and competent postmaster general prepared to lead with bold solutions to save our post office. You know, that's a Democratic congressman's letter. You know, it will have whatever impact it has. But there is this Justice Department probe. Yeah. I mean, and depending on how it turns out, I mean, there will be a lot of pressure for him to step down. Look, Democrats have been trying to push DeJoy out for a long time. And these allegations, though they're now being investigated by the DOJ, have actually been out there since last summer. So a lot of this has been known about the questions being raised around the political donations. And I don't necessarily see this changing the dynamic. I mean, one of the one of the tenets of, you know, Trumpism, and if you believe Louis DeJoy is a, is a sort of Trumper, I mean, he donated a million dollars to him, is that you don't back down, you don't step down, you don't give any quarter to these kinds of allegations. So I wouldn't expect him to do that. Uh, let's change the subject, because I, I want to get your take on uh, Dana Bash's new reporting, um, that former President Trump is, quote, more obsessed than ever with the 2020 election, unquote, and is only listening to, quote, the bottom of the bottom of the crazies in the barrel, unquote, according to a former Trump aide. Um, this is never going to end, is it? I mean, <laughs> I feel like we've been we've been having some version of this reporting for four years. I mean, this is a president, a former president, 
who constantly is scraping from the bottom of the barrel in terms of the people he ha keeps around him, the conspiracy theories that he fosters, and his obsession with not losing or not being willing to accept his loss is a defining characteristic of uh, who he is as a person. So, no, it's not going to go away. In fact, it's only going to get worse. And the the disturbing thing about this is that this is someone who is becoming even more unhinged and and disturbed from reality. And this is the person who the Republican Party has decided is the leader of their party. They can't even defend this stuff. They're just claiming that they haven't heard about it. But the reality is, is that he's living in an alternative universe when it comes to the 2020 election. And Republicans are just, you know, turning the other way, the Republicans in Washington. In yeah, and, and I mean... With deadly results, the January 6th insurrection, we've seen threats. Uh, the Secretary of State of Arizona uh, was just here uh, talking about the threats to her. Trump is all, all also allegedly spreading the lie that he's going to be reinstated in office in August. Let me make it clear. That's not going to happen. There's no such thing. Um, but according to Charles Cook, writing in the National Review, quote, Trump is trying hard to recruit journalists, politicians, and other influential figures to promulgate this belief, not as a fundraising tool or an infantile bit of trolling or a trial balloon, but as a fact, unquote. So, I mean, speaking of facts, he's not going to be reinstated, and Senator Perdue's not going to be reinstated, Senator McSally's not going to be reinstated. It's all craziness. It's nuts. But what's interesting about Charles's reporting is this isn't a grift. He's actually lost his marbles. That's what he's saying. Basically. And, and the reason that... It, I you know, Charles Cook wrote that in the National Review for those who are lis listening. It's a conservative publication is to alert conservatives to what is different about this. This is not just, uh, you know, Trump being Trump. This is not just Trump trolling. This is Trump uh, exp espousing beliefs that are anti-democratic in nature. And that's different. He makes the point that that is a completely, uh, you know, a former president, a current president, should believe in the tenets of democracy and the idea that one could be reinstated after losing a free and fair election is not in accordance with democracy. That's the point of this being kind of put out there for conservatives to read. But the question is, are they listening? And I think a lot of people really are not at this point. They just think it's more of the same. And this is different. He is disconnected from the reality of the situation. Here. Although we should note, Fox has let go of some people who push back on the lie, including the uh, one of their political directors yeah. and people at the decision desk. Uh, they are part of that conspiracy. They're buying into it and, and will, be yeah. will be responsible yeah. for the results. Absolutely. Abby Phillip, thanks so much. Good to see you again. Be sure to ch join Ab Abby every Sunday morning for Inside Politics. It's at 8 a.m. A great show with a great anchor.